Hey everybody, Hans Dahl here, lead pastor at Calvary, and I've got one question for you. And that question is this, what do you do when what you're saying is out of sync with what you are doing? When what you believe to be true doesn't match how you live your life, when your words don't match your actions, when your values are out of sync with your life. Here's what I know. It happens to every single one of us. And when we experience it, we feel it in our hearts. As we continue our series today, Heart Matters, we're going to talk about those times when what we're saying is out of sync with what we're doing, because when we experience it, we never experience all the life that God wants for you and me. And so we're going to talk about how is it that we live the full throttle life that God wants for you and God wants for me. and welcome to Calvary. My name is Angie Larson and I get to serve as the executive minister here and I am so honored that you are worshiping with us today. Today we're going to continue our worship series called Heart Matters. You know those things that weigh on your heart, those things that you feel burdened with and you struggle with from time to time, those things they matter to God. And my friend Pastor Hans has a great message for you today. But before we do that, if you're somebody who's watching on Facebook or YouTube, I wanna invite you to share and to subscribe. And if you're new to Calvary, if this is your first worship with us, I wanna invite you to join our email list. You can do this on our website at www.calvaryalex.org and click on, I wanna sign up for emails. That way you'll be the first to know about all the things that are going on here at Calvary. Thanks so much for joining us for worship and be sure to stick around afterwards because we have some really amazing things coming up, including some special announcements about connect groups, Easter, vacation Bible school, and even an upcoming night of worship. You don't want to miss out. I want to talk today especially to the guys who are out there because a few weekends ago I got to sneak away on a guys weekend and guys you know how great that can be. Uh, we went way up north. We stayed in this cabin. We spent the weekend just hanging out as guys. We frequented this dive bar in the middle of nowhere called the Mosquito. We stayed in this little two-bedroom cabin, which was rather interesting because there were five grown men that were there. We stayed up late. We played cards. One of my buddies, he's a cattle farmer, and so we ate all the red meat we could eat eat at night. We snored so loud. The rafters, man, did they shake. It was a guy's, a guy's weekend. And the reason for this trip 
was that I have a cousin who was along on the trip and he works for Polaris Snowmobiles. And he has access to the coolest, the, the latest, the greatest snowmobiles money can buy. And so he brought a bunch of snowmobiles up with us. We were up in the upper peninsula of Michigan. And guys, we spent the entire weekend riding until we couldn't ride anymore. The first day, we put on 160 miles. Well, over the first 24 hours as we were up there in the UP, it snowed, get this, about two feet. Here's a picture of me out in the snow. It was this constant snow. I am standing, my feet are on the ice on this lake. That's how deep the snow was in some places. And so after the first day of trail riding, my buddies who are way more experienced at snowmobiling than I am, they said, we got to hit the backwoods. They said, we got to get off the trail. There is just way too much powder that needs to be uh, ridden. And so not really understanding what was coming, I had snowmobiled off the trail in Minnesota, no big deal, but I was not prepared for what we experienced the next couple of days. The next day we got up and the first thing we did is we got off the trail back into the woods, way back into the woods. We followed power lines and we went way back to lakes that nobody had ridden on. And what I didn't realize we would experience is that on top of that two foot of fresh snow, underneath it was at least three or four foot of snow that was untouched. Now imagine a 500 pound snowmobile traveling over five foot of snow. You can guess how this inexperienced snowmobiler did. I got stuck. I got stuck not just once or twice. I got stuck again and again and again and again. And let me tell you, it was frustrating. And it wasn't only frustrating for me, I think. It was fr frustrating for my buddies who I was with. It was frustrating until this happened. I got stuck again and I hopped off and I was trying to dig, dig myself out. And that's when my cousin, who was along, pulled up alongside me. And with a smirk on his face, he said, huh, you're stuck again. And I said, shut up. And he said then, get on your sled. I was like, what? He said, get on your sled. And so I got on my sled and I lit it up and he said, gun it. And I said, okay. And so I, I did what I thought I was supposed to do. I, I gunned it. And he said, no, gun it. And I looked at him. I said, I am. And that's when he did this. He reached his hand over my hand and he squeezed my hand on the throttle as hard as he possibly could. And the engine screamed. And do you know what happened? I flew out of that hole that I had dug myself into and I never got stuck again. Because my cousin taught me to ride in the deep snow. You got to ride full throttle. Here's what I love about that story. I think my cousin taught me something about the life God wants for people like you and people like me. I think we have a God who wants us to live full throttle lives. Lives that are lived to the fullest. Lives where we get every ounce of what God wants for us out of life. There's a problem though. The problem is that, well... We all get stuck, don't we? We all get stuck because we spend far too much of our lives at half throttle. You see, today I want to talk to you uh, about something I think that every one of us, any, every one of us wrestles with in our hearts. Our series is called Hearts. Our Hearts Matter. I want to talk to you about uh, a dissidence that happens inside us. And it looks something like this. It has us all stuck. You see, in every one of us, you know this is true. There's a space between what we say and what we actually do. There's a space between what we say and what we do. There's a space between how we believe and how we live. Or to put it another way, there's a distance between the words we use and the actions we live. Uh, there's a difference between the values that we say are important to us and the life 
the life we live. Let me give you a couple of easy examples of this. You, you all have experienced this. For example, when it comes to our finances, how many of you have said, yep, I got to get my finances in order. We're going to take care of that. We're going to pay down all of our debt. We're going to pay off those student loans. We're going to get our finances under control. We're going to live within our means. Tomorrow, next week, next year, right? We all do this. Or how about this? Exercise. Every one of us says, I, I'm going to exercise more. I'm going to get to that next week, next month, and soon it's next year. All of us say we should eat better, but man, cheeseburgers taste really good. You see, there is this distance between what we say to be true in our lives and what we do. And sometimes it's sort of trivial, like these three examples, but other times, other times we feel that distance in our hearts. And the people around us, they, they feel it as well. For example, we teach our kids this lesson. Money isn't the only thing in life. I think every one of us wants to raise our kids. We teach them that money isn't the only thing in life. And yet, and yet our actions show something else. We can't wait to get into that bigger home. We can't wait to have that nicer car. We can't wait to get those fancier toys. Or how about this one? If I'm not healthy, my family won't be healthy. We all believe that, right? But then when it comes down to it, we again and again put off our own health. Sometimes for good reason, for the health of our family, but we do it again and again and again. Maybe for you, it's your mental health. You've had that, that phone number for that counselor on your desk for months, but you just can't bring yourself to make the phone call. You see, there's this distance. We'd all say this, if you're married, my relationship to my spouse is the most important relationship in my life. But for how many of us, this person that we love more than anyone else, how many of us neglect our spouse, that relationship? Or how about this one? Family comes first. We teach that to our staff here at the church. We say it again and again and again because we need to be reminded of it. Because far too often, our families get the time and energy that we have left over. All of us, all of us want this. We want to be known as kind, loving, and generous towards others. And yet, if you were to look at some of our social media feeds, you'd kind of You'd kind of wonder. So today what I want to wonder with you about is one simple question. And that question is this. What do I do when what, when what I'm doing is out of sync with what I'm saying? Let me say that again. What do I do when what I'm doing is out of sync with what I'm saying? When there's that distance, distance between my actions and my beliefs, the things I hold true in my life. Well, if you haven't been around the church or maybe you're, you're new to faith, uh, I want to tell you about a guy in the Bible by the name of Paul. We talk a lot about Paul here at Calvary. Paul, if there was anyone whose life should have been in sync, for whom what he did and what he said should have been aligned, it should have been Paul. You see, Paul was the model of the Christian faith. Paul started oodles and oodles and oodles of churches in that ancient world, more churches than anyone else. Paul wrote almost a third of the New Testament that we have, we have today. Paul was even he was even thrown in jail for his faith. And get this, when Jesus rose from the dead, the Bible tells us that Paul actually met Jesus face to face. You see, Paul was the model of the Christian faith. If anyone's life should have been in alignment, if what he said and what he did should have been in sync, it should have been Paul. But what we're going to read is Paul telling us that it just wasn't the case? And, and if I'm honest, as a human, just like you, it actually makes me feel kind of good to know that even Paul struggled with a life out of sync. Paul, 
says these words. He says, I don't really understand myself. For I want to do what is right, but I don't do it. Instead, I do what I hate. Paul is just like you and me. He knows he should should save money. He should pay down debt. But man, it sure would be nice to put a down payment on an ice castle. He knows he should exercise more. But instead, he finds himself sitting on the couch, binge watching all six seasons of Schitt's Creek on Netflix. He knows, he knows he should eat better. But man, Mountain Dew and Doritos sure taste good. Paul knows what you and I go through. He goes on and he says this. I want to do what is right, but I can't. I want to do what is good, but I don't. I don't want to do what is wrong, but I do it anyway. And then he says this. He says, oh, what a miserable person I am. And here's what we know, folks. You and I, when our lives are out of sync, when what we say and what we do aren't aligned, we feel it in our hearts, don't we? We feel it deep down Inside, Paul says, oh, what a miserable person I am. Who will free me from this? It's like he's asking the same question we're asking today. What do I do when what I'm doing and what I'm saying are out of sync? And listen to what he says. He says, thank God the answer is in Jesus Christ, our Lord. When asked, what do I do when what I'm saying is out of sync with what I'm doing, Paul does this. He simply points to Jesus. Notice what he doesn't say. His answer is not, you need to try harder. You need to be stronger. You need to do better. He doesn't say any of that. He doesn't say you've got to muster up the strength to figure your life out. No. What does he do? He simply points to to Jesus. Now, if I could be honest for a minute, I think when we were in Sunday school, Jesus was sort of the answer for everything. Remember your Sunday school teacher, they'd ask you any question and nine times out of 10, the answer was Jesus. And that was okay in Sunday school. But I think most of us who know that tension in our lives between what we do and what we say, We're like, Paul, throw us a bone here. There's got to be more. I mean, give us us a few tips as to how to live our lives. Paul, come on, give us five steps, six keys to living a life of alignment. But Paul doesn't do that. When asked, what do I do? What do I do when what I'm saying is out of sync with what I'm saying? He just simply points to Jesus. And I want to suggest that he he gives a perfect answer. Because behind what Paul is saying, I think are, are three points that you and I, we need to hear today. Here's what Paul knew about Jesus. You see, the first thing is this. For Jesus, today is not the end of your story. For Jesus... Today is not the end of your story. When I was up in the upper peninsula of Michigan, I was so frustrated. I kept getting stuck again and again and again until that cousin of mine came in and he put his hand over mine. He squeezed the throttle and I realized I needed to ride full throttle. We have a God who wants to do the same, the same for you. That today, this, what you've experienced, that the sort of out of sync life you live right now, it's not the end of your story. And this is how it was for Jesus, for God, again and again in the story of our faith. For Abraham, for David, for, for the woman at the well, for that little Zacchaeus up in the tree, the life they had been living wasn't the end of their, of their story. One of the things I love about this time of year is that we're all getting ready for Easter. And if ever there is a reminder that that today is not the end of our story, it's Easter. I mean, think about it. For Jesus, not even death could end his story. And the truth is the same for you. For Jesus, today is not the end of 
of your story. I think the second reason Paul points to Jesus is this. For Jesus, you are not the sum total of the life you've lived. For Jesus, you are not the sum total of the life you've lived. Let me explain that. The other day I was watching a, a few YouTube videos and up came this, this sort of spiritual guru guy. You've come across these kinds of things on YouTube. And, and he was the kind of guy where his clothes kind of fit too perfectly his teeth were a little too white. His hair, what well, sort of the color defied his age. I mean, this guy looked like he had it all together. And, and he looked at the camera and he said, your life, your life is the sum total of the life you've lived. He said it again and again. Your life is the sum total of the life you've lived. And as I listened to him, all I could hear myself saying is, I sure hope that's not true. Because I don't know about you, but I've made a lot of mistakes in life. I, I, I'm sure I'm all alone in that. Got me thinking about Paul. Later in the New Testament, in 2 Corinthians, he writes these words. So from now on, we regard no one from a worldly point of view. That business that your life is the sum total of the life you've lived, that belief we have... It's just not true. That's not how God works, Paul says. He says, so from now on, we regard no one from this worldly point of view. Though we once regarded Christ in this way, we do so no longer. And then he says this. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, they are a new creation. The old has gone. The new is here. It says if Paul is saying that past life, that out of sync life you've been living, that is in the past. That is the old. Every day you get a new chance. It is a new creation in Christ. You are made new. You see, Paul wanted all of us to know that for Jesus, you are not the sum total of the life you've lived. And lastly, I think Paul wants every one of us to know as we try and figure out how do I, oh, what do I do when what I'm saying and what I'm doing are out of sync? He wants you and I to know this. You are not alone. You're not alone. You see, friends, we have a God who knows that we spend most of our lives sort of living half throttle. What we believe and how we live our life are, are so often out of sync. And God wants you to know that God doesn't just leave you to fend for yourself, to, to get stronger, to work harder, to muster up the ability to get it all right. No, again and again and again, this God of ours reminds us that you are not alone, that we have a God who promises to never leave you leave you in that out of sync life. He's done it again and again. The Israelites, they were on the brink of entering the promised land. They had just spent 40 years traveling through the, the wilderness where their belief in God was out of sync with the life they lived in the wilderness, where they made all these false idols, where they worshiped other gods. And that's when God turns to those Israelites and says this. He says, the Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. God says to Jacob, Jacob, who in the Old Testament, his relationships with his father and his brother, they were way out of sync, out of alignment. And even in the midst of that, God looks at Jacob and says this, Behold, I am with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land, for I will not leave you. And Jesus uh, the resurrected Jesus, when he comes back to earth, he looks at his disciples and he says to some words to them, even though amid the, the crucifixion, what they believed about Jesus and how they behaved during the crucifixion were way out of alignment. Jesus looks at them and says, says this, Jesus said, behold, I am with you even to the end of of the age. You see, in the midst of this out of sync life we live, we have a God, if you hear nothing else, who wants you to know you are not, you are not alone. 
Paul pondered the question we ponder today. What do I do when what I'm saying is out of sync with what I'm doing? And Paul, Paul simply points to Jesus. Paul wanted people like you and me to know that today is not the end of your story. He wanted you and me to know that you are not the sum total of the life you've lived. You are so much more. And as you try and figure out how it is you align your life with the life God wants for you, you will never, ever be alone. You see, here's what I think Paul wants you and me to know. We have a God who looks at you and says, go. Go! I want you to live a full throttle life. I want you to live a life full, full of everything I have given you. I want you to live every ounce of this life. So go. Stop living this half throttle life and experience all that I want for you. As we close today, a couple of questions for you to ponder as we think about the life that God wants for you and for me. The first question, if you're gathered together, maybe with your spouse, with your family, maybe your connect group. First question you might ponder is this, where is what you are doing out of sync with what you are saying? Every one of us experienced what Paul experienced. This life where what we say and what we do are often out of sync. Where are you experiencing that in your life? And secondly, how about this? Why are things out of sync? What's causing that in your life? What are the voices in your head that keep you stuck? And lastly, this question, what is getting in the way of you living the aligned, full throttle life that God wants for you and God wants for me? Folks, let me pray for you. Good and gracious God, you know that we often get stuck in life. We get stuck sort of moving through this life at half throttle, moving through this life with what we're saying and what we're doing misaligned. God, you see that. You see that far too often our words don't match our actions. Our beliefs don't match the life we live. And God, you know when we experience that, we miss out on the life you want for us. And so God, remind us. Remind us of what Paul wanted each and every one of us to to know. That today is not the end of our story. That we are not the sum total of the life we've lived and that as we live this life, we are never, ever alone. God, we pray this in your name. Amen.
praise your kingdom's power reaching the near and far no force of hell can stop your beauty changing heart you've made us for much more in this awake the kingdom seed in us fill us with the strength and love of christ we are the church Oh 
Thank you so much for joining us for worship today, for setting your heart on the one who has your heart. Let's pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us for worship. Here at Calvary, we have been busy focusing on our mission to lead all people to a lifelong faith in Jesus Christ. And I'm so excited to tell you about the ways that you and your family can grow in your faith. If you had the chance today to worship with other people and you would like to dig deeper into what Pastor Hans shared about this morning, you can go on our website and click on discussion guide. I think that there are great questions there to be able to continue to grow in your faith. And if you've had the chance to worship with others and you would like to enjoy the Lord's Supper together, if you wanna have communion together, you can also go to our website, www.calvaryalex.org and click on communion. There is a full traditional communion liturgy there as well as resources to be able to help you share the Lord's Supper in your home. And as we journey towards Easter, we've developed a really awesome special website for you to figure out ways that you can grow in your faith as we push towards Easter. This is our website. It's www.easterwithcalvary.com. So go and be sure to check it out today. During this month, we are focusing specifically on connect groups. We, be, we believe that life is better when we are connected with other people. And here's Katie to get you thinking about how and who you might want to get connected to. After a year of purposeful disconnection, we hope you are ready for some intentional reconnection. Connect groups are in-person or virtual gatherings of eight to 10 people who you know or want to know better. When you form a connect group, you'll agree to be curious and honest, to listen and care about the people in this group, and you'll acknowledge that you want to strengthen your own faith as well. As we begin our reopen plan at Calvary, connect groups of 10 or fewer people are able to reserve a room in the church. You'll need to wear masks and socially distance, but we believe your time will still be meaningful. Some groups have found ways to safely meet in homes, so we'll support you there as well. And if you're not ready to meet in person, then the church will happily allow you to access our Zoom account. After so many months of disconnection, are you ready for reconnection? Who do you miss sitting next to in worship? Or who have you volunteered with and want to get to know better? Think about some people and decide on four dates before Easter that work in your schedule to just give it a try. The church will provide all the resources you need. Visit calvaryalex.org to sign up today and watch your faith deepen as you connect with others, grow in your relationship with God, and experience authentic community. You know, one of the things that I have missed so much during these COVID times is live music. You know, sitting there with your favorite beverage and then just enjoying the music floating all around you that just soothes your soul and your heart. You see, music has the ability to change our mood and it transforms how we worship. There is no denying that Calvary's musicians are just so good at doing that. So coming up here on March 19th, as we are preparing for Easter, we're going to have a night of worship. Calvary musicians have put together a wonderful evening of music for you and friends to just enjoy. So go ahead and mark your calendars for March 19th at 615. Join us for a night of worship. And this April coming up, we are fighting hunger in our community and beyond with a huge service project. I want you to watch this. Hey everybody, I am so excited to tell you about a great event that we have coming up here at Calvary. On April 18th, Calvary will be partnering with an organization called Meals from the Heart. Meals from the Heart is a nonprofit organization that brings people together to serve their neighbors through easy to execute, energized, and fun meal packing events with meals that will stay right here in our community. Each meal costs only 25 cents, and our goal here at Calvary on April 18th is to pack 50 
thousand meals. Isn't that amazing? The shelf at the high school has already kicked off our fundraising efforts by donating $2,500 to this packing, and then half of these meals will return to the shelf at the high school. Meals like Alfredo, Primavera, or rice with veggies packed by you and staying right here in Alexandria and in our local food shelves. This is the perfect project for you to bring your whole family to. It's safe for grandparents, parents, kids to all get involved and do together. This packing will happen on April 18th and we will run a small, sh safe, short shifts so that we can all make a difference together. So join me as we pack 50,000 meals together for our community. Come on guys, we can do this together. 50,000 meals. I know that we can do this together and I hope that you can join our team or invite your friends to join you and join our team as we fight hunger together. We can do this and you can sign up on our Easter website, www.easterwithcalvary.com. And guess what is also coming up? Only five months away, friends. It's Vacation Bible School. I want you to check this out. so excited for VBS here at Calvary. You can actually register right now on our website, www.calvaryalex.org. We can't wait. And as we close our time of worship together, we're going to close with a time of offering. We are so grateful for your continued generosity, just outpouring for a Calvary and for our community. There are four ways that you can give, and they're going to be on your screen. The first is that you can go to our website, www.calvaryalex.org, and click on the button that says Give. The second is that you can text Calvary Alex to 77977 and follow the prompts that come after that. The third is that you can write a check and mail it into the church office at 605 Douglas Street, Alexandria, Minnesota, 56308. Or the fourth is that you can call the number on your screen and we'll help you all through it. Thanks so much for worshiping with us today. Have a great day, everyone.